Yep. Thank you, everybody. Like you said, I'm Dominic. This is Christiana. Um, we both work for eBay Kleinanzeigen, and we wanted to share quickly before lunch um, a little bit of a story of how we build a personalized home feed for uh, eBay K, eBay Kleinanzeigen, uh, using Kafka Streams and Elasticsearch. Now, first of all, for those who don't know it, I uh, wanted to say a few words about eBay Kleinanzeigen. Uh, it looks like this. It's uh, the largest C2C offering here in uh, Germany. Uh, we have about 20 million uh, unique users uh, per month. And we have about 28 million live ads uh, at any given time in our inventory. Um, and we're still uh, rapidly growing. And traditionally, we've been uh, mainly a search-focused uh, platform where we cater mostly to the people that kind of have an idea of what they're looking for. They come to our site, put in a query, make use of our categories and attribute structure, and then hopefully find what they're looking for. Um, we wanted to add a bit of a more an inspiring and discovery kind of uh, experience on top of that, so that um, even if you don't know exactly what you're looking for, you come to our platform, and we kind of inspire you with our hidden gems um, and hopefully something that's tailored to you, so that you can just sort of browse around and, yeah, just have fun also on our platform. And uh, that's how we came up with the feed. Uh, you know it also from other platforms. Um, when you open our home screen now, you see a, a feed where you can scroll down, and hopefully those items that you see there are tailored to you. Um, so that's what we wanted to introduce, uh, and we have, actually. And um, now, why would this be tricky? Um, to give a bit of background of our, our domain, so we have, of course, lots of data. So I already told you we have like 20 million uh, unique users per month. And that means that if we want to show you something interesting, we need to keep track of what you're actually interested in. So your interactions on the platform, we need to store them, process that somehow. So we need a, a way to accommodate for that data that's continuously growing. Um, next to that, we have what we call occasional visitors. So every six months, or you have some users that come to our platform, say, every six months. And maybe they're looking for to something totally different, like now they're suddenly looking for a racing bike. In order to accommodate that, we kind of want to capture that information in that same session so that when you come to the home screen from the search page again, we immediately can show you racing bikes and uh, items like that and not the couch that you were searching for six months ago. Um, then we also have a problem which we call yeah, short-lived inventory. So what we mean by short-lived inventory is kind of that uh, we have a lot of items that are, are either very specialized or they're very popular, and they can be gone within a few minutes. And if we show you these awesome items, and every time you click on them, they're gone, you're not going to have a good experience. So we want to limit that, that risk of showing you these still items. And finally, we have yeah, finding interesting items. So we have 28 million live ads, but we need to sift through that be in order to yeah, in order to present the 30 or 40 most interesting ones to show you immediately on the first screen. Cool. Um, so we just heard why it's not super straightforward for a platform like ours to build a personalized home feed. Um, but looking at other platforms in the past years, we could see that more and more of them make um, a sort of personalized feed their default landing experience of whatever they have on their platform. So we can see some examples of LinkedIn, Pinterest, Facebook, obviously. Um, but up until a year ago, our start screen from the app still looked like this. So it could obviously be a little more inspiring. And uh, so before, before embarking on that journey of building a personalized feed for ourselves, it made all the sense in the world to have a look at what other people are doing in that area. And um, we found a lot of stuff on the internet, publications, tech blog posts, especially helpful where Pinterest and uh, LinkedIn. So if you're working there, thanks very much for that. And uh, in general, we found two main directions you can take when building a personalized feed on your, on your home page. Um, I'm just going to give a very high-level overview on both of them. Um, the first one is to pre-calculate feeds for every user that you have on your platform. This is a simple overview. Let's go through it step by step. So you start by looking at the items you have. It could be pins for Pinterest, for eBay Kleinanzeigen. It's, it's items, it's our ads with the stuff that our users actually want to sell. The next thing you look at is at the interactions on your, on your platform. So for Facebook, this could be um, shares, likes, posts, things like that. For us, it could be searches or um, item details view, someone, something piqued your interest. Then 
big magic box. Um, you start sticking it into a machine learning pipeline with the complexity of your choice. Um, you build some sort of target function, like something to do with engagement or maybe even revenue. And um, then you build a model, and you can do that in a more batch processing fashion, or you can also do it event-driven as data comes in. Either way, you'll end up with a model that would score incoming items for each user. And what would come out of that would be um, created, and uh, create, you would create feeds with them and uh, update them as you go, and you would store them somewhere. So if the user comes to your platform, all the work's already done, you just pick up the feed, and that's it. So what do we like about this approach? Obviously, retrieval is super, super fast, because work's already done, as I said. Um, you can uh, have some very good complexity in your machine learning pipeline. You can do some very cool ranking in there. What we don't like about it is that a lot of the work that you do actually goes wasted, because imagine you just built this awesome item, uh, this awesome function. You um, found these awesome items you stick into someone's feed, and then they only come back to your platform like a month later, so that's very rude. And by that time, you updated their feeds um, a million times for nothing. Um, it's also very hard to um, maintain these materialized feeds. So if one item is interesting for a million of users and it disappears on your platform, then you have to delete it in a million feeds. And that's maybe not a big problem for Pinterest, but it is for us because our items are quite short-lived. Um, then the last point is, uh, how, how fast can you be in getting new items into users' feeds, depending on whether or not you do batch processing or how complex your pipeline is? Does it take you one minute for new items to appear? Does it take you half an hour? We think that's quite a crucial factor for the success of your feed. That's quite hard to get right in this scenario. What else can you do? You can also try calculating your feed on demand. <laughs> Same thing. You again look into um, items on your site, on user interactions with your site, but this time you just stick them into databases, maybe some sort of ag aggregations, maybe some sort of um, machine learning as well to come up with clever user features. Um, in the end, they end up in separate databases. You could have one for your items, several for your, your user features, and when the user comes to the site, you take the information you have of the user and you search your item repository with that, and you build the feeds as the user comes to the platform. What do we think about that? Obviously, we like that you don't need any extra storage for the materialized feeds. Um, then you don't have the problem of outdated items, so yay, yeah, no longer deleting items from one million feeds if they disappear. The architecture is arguably a bit simpler, and since all the work happens when the user comes to the platform, it's actually quite a lot easier to implement any IB tests that you can think of. What's a bit more difficult with this approach is response times, and there's only so much you can do in terms of ranking um, when the user's already waiting for their feed, so you've got a few limits here. What did we go for for our first implementation? We went for the on-demand version, um, mainly because of the, sim the simpler architecture, and we really liked the simpler test setup, and we really didn't even want to start maintaining, maintaining a million users' feeds. And um, we always kept it in the back of our heads that we could do pre-calculation of feeds if we needed to, but we're not quite there yet. So that's the general approach, and um, now we'd like to tell you about we actually built the current version on our platform. Right. So the first part of this problem is calculating the user features. So uh, I talked about earlier, so we have these interactions of the users on the platform, which are these item views and the user searches. Those are the main bits of information that we use to, to personalize this feed. Um, and yeah, we need a way to scalably store that information and later process that information. And we uh, decided to choose Kafka for storing these item views and these user searches because it's, uh, first of all, we're already using Kafka inside our application to decouple certain subsystems using um, event-driven uh, architecture. And that made it also the sort of the tool of choice. It made sense to store this data also in Kafka. Um, it also scales really well. And it decouples uh, the ingestion from the processing. Um, so that's good. So we have our initial data. Um, secondly, we thought it, it qu quite resembled a sort of, or we thought a streaming solution would make sense, because we have this continuous data flowing in, and, and the volume is, is quite high. And the benefit of a streaming solution is that you can increment your model with every incoming event. So rather than having to do these batch jobs and having the delay, we can stay up to date and catch the user in the same session, which is one of the 
earlier problem statements that we needed to solve. Um, so we have Kafka, and we want a streaming solution. So it kind of made sense to look at Kafka streams to see if that would uh, suit our needs. And um, what we like um, about Kafka streams is that you don't need a, a specialized cluster for that like you would with Flink for the streaming part um, if you already have your data in these Kafka topics. So it runs as an included library inside your Java application, and you just consume these, these uh, data topics, and then you process the data, and you write the models back to separate Kafka topics, which you can then later retrieve for, um, yeah, for anyone that requests them, really. Um, and another nice thing about that is that it becomes really flexible. You can really quickly uh, create new Kafka Streams applications that you can put side by side. So what we have is, for instance, from the same input data, we have favorite categories, trending searches, top location, and we have a few things more that we sort of can uh, just set next to our main our user features. And then we have, in parallel, multiple Kafka Streams applications, which allow us also to quickly iterate on what we have and to A-B test new features that we come up with. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much why we like Kafka Streams. Yeah. So now that we solved the, the part with the user information, we still need to solve um, our short-lived item problem and the searching and finding um, relevant items for you. So uh, we need an item repository, and this needs to do thi two things. It's, uh, it needs to be um, a very up-to-date version of um, the things you currently have on your platform. And second, it needs to support a range of uh, retrieval functionalities, some ranking, things like that, so you can actually build a cool product on top of that. Um, we didn't have to look very far. We went for Elasticsearch as our item repository. First, it was already a tool in our toolbox. We use it for our co core search and some other use cases at eBay Kleinanzeigen. And um, yeah, it's as you, I'm pretty sure all know, it's a scalable distributed search engine. It has a range of um, ranking functionalities. You can do uh, sorting by geographic distance out of the box. You can do sorting by recency out of the box. And if all that built-in sorting isn't enough, you can even build your own ranking functions. So with that, we were able to run um, a good range of uh, very cool experiments, like rerunning a user's past uh, searches, or finding trending items in your area, or drawing items from your favorite categories or categories related to that, or even using Elastics more like this feature to come up with items that a user last viewed. So uh, in the end, we build queries based on the user information, and um, we pull results from Elasticsearch. Then we mix all them together and weigh them somehow, and that's how the final personalized feed gets built and presented to the user. So when you stick those two parts together, uh, what do you get? You get actually a system that, is it showing? Yeah. Um, a quite simple uh, architecture. So what you see on the right side is the uh, ingestion flow that I talked about. So the searches and the item views, they go into Kafka topics. And then we have a user feature service on top of that, which uh, embeds the Kafka Streams library, uh, and it consumes from these input topics, um, does the processing, and then writes the output back to Kafka topics. And on the left-hand side, we then have the feed request flow. So you open the app, and the request goes to our feed service. The feed service then retrieves the finalized models and uses those models to create uh, multiple uh, Elasticsearch requests, and they get fired off to the uh, Elasticsearch repository, which has a, a view on are, are 28 million live items. And uh, the response, uh, the weighted response gets mixed together and presented back to the user. And yeah, we're really happy with this setup because each individual part can be scaled. So depending on whether data ingestion needs to be scaled or the processing, or on the other side, uh, actually serving the requests, um, we have a, quite a flexible architecture that can accommodate for our growth. So final thoughts. Um, we built this thing. It's um, serving several thousand feeds um, every second. Um, it, we, we are confident it will continue to scale in the future. Um, if we were to put a finger on one point of concern in the whole system, it would be our elastic cluster, because we are growing in two dimensions here. It's like very scalable. It's inherently scalable. But um, we grow both in the number of feed requests that we have on the platform, and we grow in the number of queries that we fire for each feed request that we get. So that's something to keep an eye on in the future and requires quite a big cluster already. Um, however, um, as Dominic said, we're really happy with the setup. Um, it solves our product needs for now. Um, 
we have the flexibility we need to run fast experiments and um, do very cool things. Um, there is a tech blog article in the eBay Berlin tech blog. It's also on the Buzzwords website um, with some links about how other people have approached it and the contents of the talk. And if there's anything that we can't answer before the well-deserved lunch break, um, please, please come approach us at the eBay tech booth. And also if you want to talk about the jobs that we have in the eBay tech universe. So thanks for listening. Thank you. We still have five minutes for questions. Is there any? Okay, so I will navigate somehow. Uh, what do you show for new users? So it's a cold start problem. Um, yeah, uh, so we are lucky that we have many users on our apps and we have uh, very high login rates. So um, usually we, we're quite uh, confident in the user that we see is actually our user and the Kafka streams thing. We monitored the percentage of uh, feeds where we don't have any personalized results for and it was actually not point something percent, so something we didn't tackle at that moment. So usually as soon as you do your first interaction, you will have some sort of personalization in your feed and that was good enough for us. Yeah, and before that it's just randomized. So in the moment you click any of those items, we are able to in near real time um, already incorporate that into the feed the next time you visit it. So um, when um, you in introduce the personalized uh, feed, uh, what uh, are, do you solve for and how, how do you uh, measure it that um, it increases some metric or uh, and what would these metrics be? So what we essentially um, solve for is, is well, the, the people that uh, would not otherwise uh, be spending more time on our platform. So we can easily measure that because we then expect that if we do a good job, those people spend more time both on the feed but also on individual items. And, and we just track basically the time spent and, and the items viewed on our, on our website. And with longer sessions, uh, more uh, views also, it's a combination of those things. Um, but indeed, yeah, so that's what we track and that's what we sort of optimize for. Um, in your architecture diagram, you saw, we saw that you're querying some kind of state uh, of that streams. I, I assume this Kafka tables or something? Um, and yeah, and how, so how, how big uh, is that state you're having there? How big is the state? Uh, that's a good um, question. Um, so we have, first of all, we have a replication factor of three. three. So for redundancy purposes, so got to factor that in, and we have 50 partitions. 40 megabytes per partition. And then we have 40 megabytes average. per partition. So it's 40 times 50 times three, something like that. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's uh, two parts. So the source of truth is the uh, Kafka topic underneath. So that's a compacted Kafka topic, which is um, yeah, like key value, like a key value table, but in a append only log kind of. Uh, that stores the user ID with the, the model. Um, but in order to serve it, um, we use uh, Kafka Streams' sort of query API, which also is necessary. So Kafka Streams under the hood, it uses RocksDB to make sure that it can do random access lookups because it needs that also for the stream processing. And then there's a thin layer on top of that that we reuse um, to serve these models. It's been working well for us. Some people have said, like, maybe that's not to be used for querying. But so far, we've been using it in production. And yeah, it's working quite well. But if you would want to serve it in another way, you can simply read through this uh, compacted topic, which has the models. And you can uh, stick it in any kind of database that you would like if you would require some other yeah, some other uh, properties, which is also very nice. It's a flexible setup. We could always move to some other way of querying these models. And we have one more question. Um, those uh, user feeds, are they completely personalized by uh, your algorithm, or also can the user somehow guide it by marking some categories or something like this? Not yet. Product-wise, we wanted to keep it as a black box, so inspiring and uh, very surprising. Do you have Do you have any measures uh, on how effective it is in terms of like click-through, um, like improvements in in engagement, let's say, uh, given the improvements to the feed? 
Yeah, we do. We always see significant, well, not always, but for most of the experiments that we do, we see some significant increases in view items and uh, events and engagement and session length. Yeah. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you. And thank you.